Hello students, uh, in the last video we have talked about radius of gyration and now in this particular video we will discuss another simple topic. Uh, the name of the topic is moment of inertia of a body with respect to a coordinate axis. So in this particular topic we will uh, try to uh, learn that uh, what will be the moment of inertia of any particular body along different axis or different coordinate axis. Let us say along x axis, y axis and z axis. So one diagram is drawn over here, one rigid body is shown and in that rigid body one region is shown labeled as O. From that origin three axes are drawn. One is, uh, first is x-axis along uh, horizontal, second is uh, y-axis along vertical direction, third is z-axis which is at 90 degrees to x-axis and y-axis. Now in order to find out the moment of inertia of this particular body along these three axes, we have considered a small element of the uh, of the body and uh, the mass of that particular element is dm. And uh, let us see the distance of that particular uh, element from a different uh, along the different axis from origin. So the distance of the small element from origin along x axis is labeled as x units and distance of that element along z axis from origin is labeled as z axis is, uh, is labeled as z units then distance of that small element along y axis from origin is labeled as y units and the distance of uh, that particular uh, element from origin uh, its uh, vector is given as let us say r units means the distance from origin of this particular element is r units now uh, we know that uh, if we want to find out the moment of inertia of this particular uh, element along y axis uh, so that will be called as the resistance this particular body is offering against its rotation about y axis. So we know whenever we have want to find the moment of inertia we use this particular uh, term that i equal to r square dm and take the integration of that particular term where uh, dm is the mass of the small element consider from the body and uh, r is the distance of that particular element uh, element from uh, the axis of rotation so in order to find out uh, the moment of inertia of this particular body along y axis we are using same term so that's why it is written i y is equal to r square dm and the integration of that particular term now over here you see we have replaced r square by this particular term that is z square plus x square. So let us see why we have replaced this r square by z square and x square. It is very simple to understand. If we want to find out the moment of inertia of this particular body <coughs> about y axis. So let us consider the other plane x z plane. Now you see uh, if you want to find the moment of inertia of this particular uh, body along y axis then you have to consider the distances of this particular uh, element from other two axes. Now distance of this particular element uh, along x axis is x units and along z axis is z units. Now focus on this particular triangle. Uh, let us say O A B. Now this is the hypotenuse, this is the base. Let us say this is the <coughs> uh, perpendicular and uh, in this particular triangle you see we will apply Pythagoras theorem so square of the hypotenuse will be equal to the sum of the square of other two sides so we can say that uh, r square is equal to z square plus x square you see we have replaced this particular term r square by z square plus x square over here that is why we have replaced r square by this particular term so it means what we have concluded if we have to find the moment of inertia of any particular body along y axis let us first see what is the distance of the small element of that particular body from other two axes and take the square of those two distances and add those two uh, distances after taking their square and multiply it by the mass of that small element. Similarly, if we want to find the moment of inertia of this particular body along other two axes, let us say along x axis or along z axis. So what we have to do, it is very simple again. If you want to find the moment of inertia along uh, z-axis, then you have to see what is the distance of that small element from x-axis and y-axis. So that will be uh, how much? Along x-axis it will be x, along y-axis it will be y. So take the square of those two distances, add those, add those, uh, add the square of those two distances over here and multiply it by the uh, mass of small elements. So similarly for i-x, that will be equal to uh, integration of y square plus z square into dm. So if you are considering moment of inertia along uh, x axis then you have to see what is the distance of that small element from other two axis that is from y axis and z axis. From uh, y axis 
it will be equal to y units from <coughs> z axis it will be equal to means along z axis it will be equal to y, uh, z units and along y axis it will be equal to y units so that's why we have replaced r square by y square plus z square over here so it is very simple to understand so this uh, 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 these equations you should keep in your mind it will help you in the coming uh, topics where you have to find the moment of inertia of uh, the given body along various axes thank you very much